And now I'm going to mute myself and pass it over to you. Thank you, Caleb, for uh, presenting today. And I'm going to hand it off to you to introduce yourself in South Carolina Federal Credit Union. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me today. And, uh, and yeah, welcome. Um, appreciate you having me uh, for to present a little bit about South Carolina Federal Credit Union, uh, myself and, and some of the opportunities we have and, and what it's like to uh, to apply and maybe potentially work for here for the credit union. So I got a few slides today just to go over. Um, I'll kickstart it just a little bit about myself. Um, so my name is Caleb. I've been with South Carolina Federal Credit Union uh, for almost seven years uh, this coming year. Um, and I started actually in a not I was in the tech industry prior to this and started looking for some consistency with work life balance uh, and came into the, uh, the credit union actually as a financial sales representative um, seven years ago. Uh, through our, uh, you know, loved everything, every bit of what I did in the sales role, uh, but we have a great career development program here within South Carolina Federal, a uh, career development team actually in HR, and their purpose is to just help employees uh, find a career, find passions within the organization, um, and, and help pursue those. Uh, I started, I knew I had a great recruiting uh, experience coming into the organization and uh, had a good relationship with the talent acquisition manager at the time. So started attending some career fairs, started uh, working with career development to find um, yeah, my what I liked about talent acquisition, which was the process and uh, connecting with others. Um, so, uh, you know, after two and a half, three years or so, um, I had the opportunity to come on board as a talent acquisition representative. Uh, and I've been doing this ever since and loving every minute of it, um, helping new employees, helping applicants find passions within the organization like I did, uh, sharing the, the mission and the values and the culture of the credit union with others, um, getting them excited about coming on board with us. So um, that's a little bit about myself. Um, kind of tying into that was about South Carolina Federal Credit Union. Uh, so we are um, we've actually been a credit union since 1936 here in Charleston. We were the Naval Shipyard Credit Union uh, when we were founded by the employees of that shipyard. In the 90s, we uh, went through the shipyard, moved out of Charleston, uh, went through some changes, became South Carolina Federal Credit Union in that time and became a community charter, uh, opening up membership to anyone that essentially lived in the Charleston Tri-County area uh, is how we um, started to spread in Charleston up to 14 financial centers and, and of course headquartered right off of Rivers Avenue now. Uh, but over the several past years, we have moved to a new chartership and we've been able to operate throughout South Carolina. Uh, so you'll see us now in Columbia and Florence and Georgetown and Spartanburg and, and growing seems like every day, um, which is an exciting time to be. So I always, I always like to say that, you know, 85 years, I believe now is a credit union serving our members, uh, very rooted in, in a strong culture and foundation. Uh, but with the growth that we're seeing, um, it's really like, you know, new opportunities are coming about, new technologies, new products and services for our members. Uh, it's just a really exciting, uh, engaging, challenging time and fun time to be coming on board with the organization. Um, so um, a couple of little points to the South Carolina Federal Credit Union. Uh, we're really passionate as a credit union. We are member owned and for that reason, we are all about taking care of our members uh, through life simplified experiences. Uh, and we're proud to be an employer of choice organization where people really matter. Um, I think that's the any credit union that you connect with, uh, the emphasis is going to be on the people, our community, our members, ourselves as employees, we're all about helping each other. Um, and because of the those, um, it's credit unions as a whole, I can't say enough positive things about any credit union. Uh, but we really take that to heart. And it shows through the Glassdoor best places to work lists that we've been able to, to be on for, uh, I think, three years now. Uh, the best places to work in South Carolina now, uh, nine times is one of the best places to work. It's all around that culture of, of giving back and being passionate about helping. Um, and then, the, you know, the benefits and the uh, the challenges and the growth opportunities within the organization really make it an employer of choice organization. Um, we we are proud of that so much so that I, uh, we've just celebrated someone's 40th year anniversary with the credit union. Uh, we have uh, 50, over 50 employees who have been here 20 years or more. Um, myself, I'm, I'm only at seven, but I'll, I'll get there eventually. Uh, but it's not uncommon to see people start a career right out of even high school in some cases, uh, still working with us today and plan to retire here. Um, 
it's all around those, those core values of honesty, teamwork, professionalism, positive attitude, accountability, and coupled with that ability that I touched on to share the vision of the credit union, uh, really make us special and make us stand out amongst the financial services industry. Uh, you're not just a customer of a credit union, you are a member, a member owner and, and somebody that matters to, to everyone in, in the team. Um, so some of those perks from the employment standpoint, uh, we offer very competitive wages, uh, a great wellness program, exceptional medical benefits, uh, free health insurance option. So we actually will pay 100% of health insurance premiums uh, for an employee uh, through one of the plans that we have. Uh, great PTO schedule, that's paid time off, um, three and a half weeks of time off that you're accruing in a full-time position uh, annually. Uh, of course, no nights, no weekends, uh, almost any, none of our positions uh, work any weekend hours or, or after six o'clock. Typically, most positions are 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Um, we recognize every holiday, so we're off here in just a couple of days or Monday for a holiday. Uh, but that pay time off of three and a half weeks of time off a year. In addition to that, a lot of additional time off uh, for wellness initiatives, volunteer efforts. Uh, you can earn personal time for those types of things as well, giving back to the community. Um, additionally, we offer some some non traditional benefits. Uh, you know, the going back to the learning and developing and promotions, uh, you know, typically any position that we have available, we're always seeking an internal promotion over an external hire. Um, so we have a career develop that career development program that's really helping our employees set themselves up for success in, in careers and, and um, you know, pursuing those passions. Uh, we offer some educational assistance in the form of tuition reimbursement. Uh, so if you are continuing the education piece, uh, we can uh, offer some reimbursement there. Uh, the time, additional time off through the year, which I touched on for those wellness initiatives, uh, for simple things, even for your birthday, uh, we're, we're lucky enough as a birthday present to get a day off uh, to utilize for that and, and various other reasons as well. Um, and then we, we have an on-site gym at our, at our headquarters. You're free to use as an employee, but we recognize that our financial centers are all not near our headquarters, so we offer some gym reimbursements as well if you're a member of Gold's or Pivotal or whatever other gym you may be a part of, um, we're able to, to reimburse you on that as well. Um, and then some of the, the opportunities that we have within the organization, uh, you, when you think about a financial institution, um, you know, a lot of it, and you'll see that there's a lot of financial industry specific roles from financial service to sales. Uh, to mortgage, but it takes a facilities department, a marketing department, an IT department. There's so many other facets to the organization and to the business uh, that we're pretty consistently hiring for and, and searching for individuals for. Uh, so these positions are the ones that are available today uh, as we speak and financial service representative, uh, both full-time, part-time and peak time opportunities. Uh, to help around a schedule. Maybe you're still in school, maybe you're, you're looking for some part-time or, or of course the full-time available uh, as well. Uh, but that service position is more along the lines of a teller type role, um, you know, helping the members within the financial centers uh, with their cash transactions, their monetary needs, but maybe it's setting up an online banking, maybe it's helping them figure out uh, what to do with their debit card or if they're traveling overseas. Um, Maybe they've lost their checkbook. So there's some problem solving and, and pieces to it as well. Uh, and maybe, you know, they, our members really look to us as financial experts. Uh, so, you know, helping them with some of the products and services and the knowledge that you may have in their role uh, is certainly an important piece. Um, we do have financial sales positions. So uh, taking that a step further, helping the members set up new membership, or maybe they're looking to buy their first car or uh, debt consolidation with a credit card or any of the the consumer products that we have to offer. The financial sales representative is assisting those members um, within the financial center uh, to apply, to close, to, to open accounts, what have you. Um, contact center service representative, we've got a call center here at the credit union. Um, the cool thing about that is if you have ever worked in a call center before, uh, you know that the hours are all over the place, nights, weekends, holidays, uh, it doesn't matter. With our contact center, we stick to those same hours of 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. So um, it's, again, if you've been in the, the call center environment or looking in that career field, that's the hours alone are enough uh, to make that contact center very special. Uh, but it's the same helping our members with those services and products and anything that they may be calling into the to the contact center for. Um, 
some positions, um, and you'll notice this is in the Greenville market as we continue to expand, as I touched on with the credit union, we're, we're really starting to spread throughout South Carolina. Uh, but some mortgage specific roles for underwriting uh, mortgage loan officers, which are assisting the members setting up applying for those mortgages and things. Uh, an investment advisor as well. Uh, we're looking for wealth management, um, somebody to help our members with their wealth management. Um, and those positions are in the Greenville market um, at the moment. But again, those positions can come about here in Charleston, really throughout South Carolina. I know um, most of you are here in the Charleston area now. And the majority of the positions we typically held are here in the Charleston area, but as we continue to expand and grow, if you're thinking about moving upstate or wherever the case may be, uh, hopefully we'll have some opportunities up that way um, soon as well. So um, please follow, you know, scfederal.jobs is our direct website. We keep our current listings there. Uh, you can follow us through that. Our application process is super streamlined and easy. Uh, Take, shouldn't take more than five minutes to apply through our website um, if, if you'd like to go there and, and search around for the jobs or follow us. Um, and then I would certainly in, uh, encourage you to connect with me directly as well as I'm a, one of a few talent acquisition representatives here at South Carolina Federal. Uh, I'm definitely more than happy to, to connect with you. Um, shoot me a text, a phone call, email, follow me on LinkedIn. I don't have my LinkedIn here right at the moment, but you can search for me. Uh, you'll see this face and, and that email address, I'm sure, uh, pop up on your LinkedIn page. Uh, but I, yeah, I strongly suggest connecting with me and seeing about some of the opportunities that maybe I know about that aren't available yet or, or some areas just looking at your resume. I can give you some, some good ideas of some areas within the credit union that, that you may be uh, interested in and, and we can have that discussion about them. I'm really happy to discuss anything with you and stay connected with you as you um, continue your education and looking at careers or if you're thinking about switching careers, whatever the case may be, uh, I'm certainly happy to help. So thank you again uh, for your time today and I'm, I'm definitely happy to answer any, answer any questions that you have. That was a great uh, succinct and, and just great information and I have a couple of questions on behalf of students. Definitely. What I was actually navigating to your website while you're looking and I see y'all do have a very uncomplicated application process, which as a career counselor who helps thousands of college students apply, <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, application processes have become very difficult and complicated and I even see that you can apply with LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. So I wanna ask you this specific question and, and we may use your feedback um, in some of our communications classes. Do you prefer, so if a, a entry level college student is applying and they can apply with LinkedIn and or apply with a resume, do you recommend both? Do you recommend if you have a strong LinkedIn profile, what is your opinion on that? And how does yeah. your um, tracking system work on the backside if they apply? Using sure, LinkedIn? so no, great question. And our, our system is set up extremely easy. Um, and, and again, to that life simplified, it's about helping our uh, members, but helping each other and helping our employees. Our applicant tracking system has made it easy for uh, applicants, but also myself, because everything funnels to the same area for us, whether you're applying on LinkedIn or directly through our website, we're getting those. Um, as a rule of thumb for, in, for other businesses or organizations that you're applying for, um, I would say the more the merrier uh, in most cases. So, you know, I know prior with tracking systems, if you applied through Indeed or through LinkedIn or something like that, quite often those are not making it to a, a job seekers uh, or a job um, career page, a career board. It's oftentimes going to an email or to an, uh, another area that uh, may be overlooked, um, quite frankly, with you, because, um, you know, a lot of people are out there in the job market. So it's, it's always best, no matter what, if you're going to do one thing, go to somebody's website and apply directly through their their site because that's going straight to their tracking system or whatever they use for the applications. Uh, but if you find us on LinkedIn, shoot a quick uh, application in there and maybe go to our website to explore further and, and do it. So um, yeah, it's never a bad thing, no matter what tools you have to get in touch with a recruiter. Um, and even to take it one step further, maybe it's on LinkedIn, you apply and then you find myself and just shoot a quick message as well to let them know you apply just in case there are issues where that application isn't going directly into the system. Right. Yeah, that, that's really good. Um, that's really good feedback because, you know, lots of times students are just entry level job seekers. They're, they, they have not very advanced on having had applied for hundreds or thousands of jobs, it seems. So that's great feedback. So I have a, another um, specific question. 
Um, so what type of, you know, what types of majors are you looking for? If a student's coming in with no experience, mm -hmm. what types of roles would they look for within your organization? And I see you shared some of those. Are those positions that students can apply to right out of the gate with just their degree? Yeah, so we look at edu education is, is certainly an important piece, uh, especially if you're getting into specialized roles. Um, you know, this is an accounting role and you've got an accounting degree, that's going to be a great matchup. Uh, a lot of our positions, um, and actually most of the ones that you've probably noticed that I had, um, do not require a college education. For. Right. Um, so, it, you know, it, we are, we'll always outline the, the education requirements within the job description. Uh, but for us at the credit union, we're, we're confident in our training department. We have a great learning center here within the credit union. Um, we look for the skills of, of customer service, of cash handling for like a financial service representative, right. of, of maybe some mortgage background for the mortgage role. Um, but for straight out, of, let's say you're straight out of college and uh, maybe you've got a, a degree that's not relevant to the finance industry, or maybe you don't even have your degree yet. Um, our financial service representatives, our financial sales representatives, our contact center, those require a high school um, education and, and some you know, like customer service skills, because we're confident in the training that we can do and the development we can do. And, um, and yeah. yeah, if you're, yeah, if you're within your career and you're looking further into to more specific roles and say it's marketing and uh, that's where that career development team is going to help you too. If there's some education shortcomings or, or gaps right there, they can certainly kind of address those with you. And do y'all hire any, uh, I, I know we've had some students apply. I know you, I don't think you have a formal internship program, but do y'all hire students during the summer to work in those roles or is your preference is to wait until they're available to work full time. We, with internships, um, we get that question a lot with, with college because it's a, it's a great tool. We, yeah, we don't have a formalized intern um, program. It's more as needed within our departments. Um, we have, you know, maybe it's marketing or IT or finance, whatever the case, fulfillment. Um, they have opened up internships in the past. Um, it's usually based around the, the business need a little bit um, there. So uh, typically with the, the, within like the member facing roles, we don't typically have internships for financial service or sales positions. Uh, but we do, again, going back to if you have, if you've worked at a, at a retail store for a little bit of time and you have that cash handling experience from there, or maybe you're in food and bev, those are translatable to, to service that, that we can provide. Um, so maybe it's the, maybe you're still in school for a few days a week and that peak time position, which is just two days a week will work for you. Uh, even better than an internship, you're getting paid uh, right. <laughs> hourly for those positions right. as well. And we're still developing you and coaching you and, um, right. and yeah, so. So I, I have now a, um, so we, we handle this a lot with our students, you know, the job market is incredibly strong right now. And so we're getting students who have had offers they're, they're, you know, trying to evaluate different offers. So I'm asking you more of a recruiter, and this could be a personal, okay. not necessarily probably a, per, a, there's probably not a policy, okay. um, but how, how would you advise a student handles this situation? And this will be one I'll probably use because we, I coach mm -hmm. students do it a lot. You know, I'm a student, I'm interviewing. Um, I like the organization. They've made me a potential verbal offer, maybe not anything in writing yet. I've got a couple other interviews that I'm doing and I want to evaluate those interviews to make the best choice for myself. And I'm getting maybe some pressure to accept an offer. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to come work for you. I'm in your interview process somewhere, but maybe haven't heard from back, back from you. What is the, what is the situation? How do you recommend students communicate to you that they're in other interviews in a way that still keeps them viable and, you know, um, competitive in your eyes sure. and, and what what do you look for uh in that that they would communicate to you yeah so um candidly and from my opinion honesty is one of our core values here within the credit union uh, i will never penalize somebody on their application if they are pursuing several positions i've we've all been in that position we you know we're looking for work and it's you can't just you know apply to one job and and hope <laughs> uh, so you're, you're applying for several jobs and and you know it's up to the recruiter as well in that point to to share with you the culture and the realistic expectations of time frames uh, for the position so hopefully if you're you know if you're connecting with us i know that's this will be the case but hopefully your recruiter is going to be honest as well and provide you the realistic idea of, of time frames um you know and expectations so that you can make a decision you know you're not missing out on another opportunity um if 
you're applying here and you realize it's going to take three weeks before we hire you, but you need an answer by tomorrow. It, you know, it's just the, the due diligence on our part to make sure you know what to expect through the recruiting process. Uh, but I ask that the same for my candidates. You know, I, I typically will ask, yeah, what else, what is, what are you, you know, what are some other areas that you're interested in or what are, if you are applying elsewhere, what's going to, what are the important things to you as far as who you're looking to work for? Right. Uh, because if it's if it's um, if it's salary, we can have a deeper discussion about salary. If it's culture, we can really dive into what our culture, what's special about our culture, um, to help prepare you and give you the best uh, understanding of of what it's like for us, uh, as opposed to that other employer that you may be interested in. But yeah. again, I will. Right you know, feedback. Yeah, if it's in that if it's in that very first call and you're telling me you're you're looking at other jobs and, and I'm really wanting to pursue you, um, I'll make sure that I'm hustling to make sure that you know we're getting through the process just as quickly. So awesome. It's been a while since I've been in the recruiting. I've been in this role for 10 years. So I want to make sure I'm still giving relevant advice. So that's yeah. not good. That's Hopefully great. that lines up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it does. Do, are there any um, in, in banking? I know with our, our students, especially they're looking to go maybe in kind of the financial route or accounting or banking. <laughs> their GPA requirements. Do y'all have any of those? I mean, are you looking? Um, yeah, we typically don't have a GPA requirement for positions. Um, listing that on your resume, I mean, anything that you're proud of that you've accomplished, I say go for it and and make sure that you're bringing it to our attention. Uh, but we don't have anything um, that would prevent you, um, you know, based upon GPA or anything like that. That'll, that'd probably be welcome news for some of our students. <laughs> when we're presenting, I always say, if your GPA looks anything like mine did at Clemson, <laughs> Don't put it on your resume. Let's talk about it. focus on your strengths. So yeah. this is um this has been really great information. I, I really appreciate it. And so what I'll do, I've got to stop recording here. I will um let's see, let me stop.